It's episode 66 and part two of things I would have done differently. Hi guys and welcome to the Regen ID Wedding Show and today we are talking the second part of a three-part series of things that I would have done differently on my wedding. It's a, it's a collaboration of feedback from clients and from ourselves, things yeah. that we've learned along the years um, that we shouldn't have well, but expected. Yeah, or well, would have done differently. And I think a lot of the brides and, and the couples, when you meet with them after the wedding, they always tell you, you know what, I should have done that. And all we're trying to do is put together as many of those and maybe it's some good advice for you on your wedding day. And I mean, the first one for today can be perceived as negative. So let's try and put it in as positive way as I, as I can. And the whole idea is it was said that I should have expected something to go wrong. And with that, we're not meaning that the cake didn't arrive or something major happened, but anything can happen on a day from a family member that gets a flat tire and is a half an hour late for the wedding ceremony to some small wardrobe malfunction or something silly that happens. Or maybe the flowers is not as high as you thought or the gifting is on the right side and not on the left side. Small things, yeah. okay, small things. So, so the advice here was from the bride specifically was, you know what, it's a big event. Any wedding is a big event. It's a lot of people, a lot of things that need to come together. So the advice is make peace that there's probably going to be something small that's going to go wrong. And if you can make peace of it in advance, it's probably not going to upset you as much on the day. And as we've stressed so, so many times on the show, it's probably only you and maybe one or two other people that's going to know exactly what was planned for the day so don't stress too much make peace that something might might not go wrong and just live with it yeah. number two this is an interesting one um, she said that she should have formalized her style overall theme and color scheme before starting to buy items Shiny. and i think that's where the excitement gets you you know you, you're planning to do your wedding and you may be diying it and doing a lot of it yourself i think in this instance there wasn't a planner involved yeah. and i think the obvious advice here is before you buy anything whether it's candles or table decorations or anything that you want to buy for your wedding day formalize your color scheme formalize your style and that's i think where where pinterest and those sort of things can be very helpful because it can allow you to create a mood board i mean if you speak to to any advertising company or a marketing company uh, often when we do commercial work you know you'll get presented with a mood board because it gives you an idea of what they're trying to accomplish yes. with, a, with a final product the in feeling. terms of the mood and the feeling and the colors and everything so from our side i think it's actually time well spent creating your own little small mood board and and from sticking to it yes sticking to not, it because and, yeah, not um, changing it along the way it's very important that when you and your partner have decided stick to it no matter what who says stick to it <laughs> it's like a marketing campaign i mean once you yeah. decide you you, you 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 take it through all the way you don't change it halfway and i think what she also mentioned she said at the end she ended up with a lot of small items that didn't fit in anywhere and obviously wasn't used on the wedding day. And those are often the things that you can't really go return. No. And you might have bought them months ago. So and either you don't have the slips or the store is not interested in, in refunding and you. And you bought a lot of it. Yes. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. I think formalize your style, your color scheme, all those things, and then start buying. I know we're all excited like that. You just want to get, you know. It's like when you find out you're pregnant. Yes. <laughs> you know you can only buy white yellow until you know and where green the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so there's some advice for the pregnancy afterwards as well okay number three do not assume anything there are two examples that, that we've we had got yeah. is uh, de decor um don't assume that your decor co company will necessarily do the setup there's some decor companies that only delivers the products. But only, and only then, decor rental. Yes, not and a, then someone a... still have to set it up. So make sure 
There's a reason why there's a, a saying of assumption is the mother of all what to call ups, okay? There's a reason. Don't assume that they're going to do all the decor and... Confirm it to yeah, them. Confirm. And, I, and I mean, we've got first-hand experience of an instance like this. And it wasn't the company's fault or the bride's fault. It was just it was a, a mis miscommunication mis between the two. Misunderstanding. Because the specific decor company don't do setups. They yeah. provide the decor, they but they hire. don't do... It's the, only yeah. decor hire. So someone needed to set it up, but the bride assumed that the decor company would do and that. And it's, it's always so terrible afterwards when you find out from the bride or the, bride's fa or the, the couple's family that the decor company uh, didn't do what they said, but it was never said. Confirmed, yeah. And, yeah and, so and even in the invoices, there was, oh, no, yeah. there was nothing about setting up. It was just, yeah. you're hiring this, we're delivering it at that time, and we're picking it up at that time. So just keep that in mind. And similar things have happened with wedding cakes as well, where the cake just gets delivered by a third party, but someone still needs to set it up or put it in the right place or first put it in a fridge or in a cold room for a certain amount of time yes. and then move it to the right spot. Especially for summer's weddings, summer yes. weddings, where it gets so warm here in our valley, um, in the Eastern Cape. I mean, you cannot let, you cannot get a, a cake delivered and let it stand for two, three hours. At the reception, it's it going to be stored, yeah. So all we're trying to say, there's many other examples Whoever you deal with, don't assume, confirm everything with yeah. them and confirm it again in the days leading up to the wedding that you are 100% sure that what you think and what it's they think happen. is the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, number four, I should have checked my timeline with every vendor, not just a DJ and photographer. So specific reference here to the meals. Food. Yeah. So what happened in this instance is like always, we privilege that the couple will always check their timeline with us and we're often involved with with the or finalizing the, yeah. the timeline. And in the same space the venue normally are, you know, kept in a loop as well as the DJ. But in this case the outside caterers um, were given the timeline and they were told that main courses to be served, for instance, at eight o'clock. It was a plated meal and no one I wanted to say figured for a out a lot of yeah, for, a, for a huge wedding. No one calculated or asked the, the, the caterers how long it would take to get that plated meal to everyone. And what happened, it took over an hour to get all the food to every single person. And the rest of the evening's program just was a mess. Everything I'm, started running very, I'm very late. I'm thinking about the, the um, day that we had Jane from In yeah, Food she, on. She just, and she, she touched on that as well. Nog said how quickly her team can plate, yeah. can do a plated so, and serve and plate for how many people they are exceptionally good in it. So in this instance, I mean, it, it's, what Adi is saying is important. I mean, for instance, certain caterers will give you their time standards or their... Um, uh, what call it a service level agreement with you that they will for instance plate the hundred meals in 25 minutes or whatever the time is make I don't want to get in I don't want to get in that detail sure but you, you what, happened, what, it is. what happened here wasn't the caterers fault the caterers were only told that the main meal must come out at eight o'clock they weren't told that the first dance is going to happen at 8 50. yes I didn't so, know the rest of the timeline yes so what we're trying to get at is when you finalize that timeline don't just confirm it with your photographer venue and your DJ for instance I would suggest you send it to all your vendors. Everyone that's that's involved with your day, from the ceremony all the way to the reception, yeah. make sure they all have a full timeline and make sure that you confirm with them that they're happy with that timeline and that they can deliver their set service in it. And I think that's that's a very, very solid piece it's of really advice. Again, it's almost back to the don't assume one. It's I don't want to say it's no one's fault, but the, it, it's miscommunication. Yeah, I just don't think that... I remember a wedding is a lot of um, stuff that must be organized. I don't think it, many couples think about things like that. Well, I mean, that, that is the next point. I mean, and number five and number six Tiny. tie in a little bit with one another. But it says, do think through absolutely everything, especially if you're DIYing your wedding. And I also want to read number six. Don't expect to know what you are doing unless you're an experienced wedding or event planner. Do your research. So what happened, the feedback from both of these brides were they were, they were doing most of their organizing themselves. Organizing a wedding is a big event, no matter which way you look that at is, it. If, you, yes. if you're organizing a micro wedding now and you're having your family and your closest friends and it's 10 or 15 people, it's a different story. Yes. 
But if you're planning a wedding for 100 or 200 or 300 or sometimes even more people, you are in big event organizing, yeah, you know, um, area area scenario. Yeah. So, so what we're trying to say is unless you're an experienced event planner or wedding planner, do your research, number one. Think through the whole day. Think through every aspect of it. And also... Um, make, make use of make use of the guides I mean the, all the wedding magazines and, and some of the wedding websites have got brilliant guides that give you checklists and guidelines in terms of what to do when you there's know. a lot of things there's a lot of things I take my hat off to a wedding planner yeah. um, it's, a, it's a specialist felt and it is if you're good you're great yeah. but if you're not so, good you're not good so what, again, we're getting at is, it's, it's, I think a lot of people think it's easy. And, and I think when you start out, it might seem easy, but there's a lot of detail. Don't get caught in it without clearly thinking through everything. I mean, the idea of all of us is we don't want you to have any regrets. Okay. I'm gonna, I want to say this one. Seven. <laughs> it's interesting because seven is both of our favorite numbers. <laughs> okay, tell them. <laughs> okay, so this one is, don't assume that your partner will be as interested in organizing and planning the wedding. Um, we see it a lot on um, during a wedding expo, for instance. Most of the time, look, I don't want to put any blame on a gender, <laughs> but a lot of the times the girls get super excited about the wedding. That's true. And they drag the guy along or their partner along. Um, say for instance to a to a wedding expo and you can almost see it is difficult they it, they are they're not they, there they're suffering man yeah. okay so just um you're two different people just know and talk to each other and say look it's i'm gonna do the organizing and i'm gonna sometimes ask you your advice but don't expect your partner to be as into it, into the organizing. Not everyone is into organizing weddings. Yeah. It's really... I think what, what this bride said was very interesting for me. She said, you know, it would have saved them a lot of unnecessary stress and conflict in the months and weeks leading up to the we no, it's wedding. it's not necessary So if to, you, to, to fight or stress no. about stuff like that. You cannot change someone's way. Um, it's, I was you know, like that. Yeah, Richard was I, like I, that and I accepted it. Um, I... Never, we never want to change each other. Um, he told me, "Look, it's your baby. You're into all the organizing, and we did a. We were having a that time twenty years ago a DIY, a lot of DIY wedding stuff going on, and um, I just accepted it. If I would have made him part of it, we would definitely have <laughs> would had a fight. No. Definitely. So." Cut your partner some slack. Yes. If he's not into it, if she's not into yeah. it, that's also happened. Yes. I must just state it. Yeah. We've had, uh, I think in the last 10 years, I think there was like two grooms I can remember where the groom was actually driving the, the organizing yeah. and the bride was almost just along for the ride. Yeah. And that's going to happen. So so just cut your partner some slack. If they're not into it, they're not into it. Yeah. Make Don't peace fight with, with it. them. Yeah. It's, it's one day. No, it's not worth it. Yeah, it's not worth it. Okay, this is also a very interesting one. Number eight, I would have done what I wanted to and not my mom, sister, or family members. Don't do anything that you don't want to do. Do the things you want to do. And I think it's something that we've stressed so many times. So if you go and shop for wedding dresses, don't pick the dress your mom like or the dress that your friends like or Even your sister if like. Even someone is paying for the dress, Still, honor yourself. It is your day. Yeah. Can, Please, and it's it, it's only once. It's so, no. it, it sounds selfish, but it you can no, be you can be selfish, selfish on that one day. It's your it's the only day that's you and your partner's day. It's the it's one day that's only about you two. And and I think most families, even though your mom or your sister or your auntie or your oma or whoever wants to influence you, I think if you can have the courage to tell them it's not what I like they will have respect for yeah. it because it is ultimately your day. You need to feel comfortable in that dress. You need to like the decor. You need to like the venue. You need to be comfortable with the photographer, the DJ, the videographer, all of those people. They mustn't be picked because your the parents, food. the food, you must love the food. It's not something that your friends would like. You the must cake. love the food. The cake, all of it. Everything. Make sure you pick what you and your partner want. Yes. Make it easy. Okay, and the last one for today. This is a very interesting one. Yeah. I would have danced more. 
Yeah, okay, so what we recommend is get a bridesmaid or your best friend yeah. um, to pull you away from the people that take too much of your time. Well, look, the long we're not, conversations. Yeah, look, we're not saying don't speak to anyone, but I mean, there's a lot of times <laughs> where you can see the poor couple mm. are standing with, uh, with some of the guests and they are... One foot is in the conversation and the other one is like, oh my word, I just want to go and party and dance. Get your best friend to come and take the slack and say, oh, it's your song. Or yeah, Come dance with yeah. us or pull you away. So we, we, we've talked about A this as well person. In, in our f- previous episodes. And we said, try and make time to go by and say hi to everyone. But be cautious. I mean, we've all got family like that. At the moment, they, they get you... They've they got keep you. you. And they're going to chat to you for 20 minutes because they want to... In Afrikaans, they want to live a family out. I don't know what the English saying they is for that. They want to lie family out. So they you know, they want to talk about you know, how big you've got. I don't know what. It's your party. You need to have fun. Like we said, get your groomsmen and your bridesmaids to watch out for something like that. And the moment they spot that someone is kind of bogging you down, pull you away, break that... You've chatted to them. You were friendly with them. It's it's not it's not like you didn't speak to them. But then go dance some more. I mean, it's your day. And if you like dancing, go and dance. Dance as much as you can on your wedding day. That's ultimately what it is. It's about a party. So that's it for today. That's our tips for today. Well, not tips really. Our feedback from from couples. Yes. And like I said, you know, it's one of those things that we just want to get the message across. Use it. Don't use it. Um, it's always great. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. Yes. I mean, it's easy to look back six months Perfect later and say, times. I should have done this or I should have done that. I think we all feel like it now, looking back at the last five or six months of this year, how many things we would have done differently, but none of us knew. So the best advice is to learn from other people's mistakes and simplify your own planning. So that's it for today. We'll be again back tomorrow with another episode. Thank you guys for watching. If you like what we're doing, giving, give, please give us a thumbs up. It helps the channel. And please subscribe. Please, please, please tell everyone that you know to subscribe. We'd we love to grow the channel. We would appreciate it. Yeah. We, and we, there's an awesome that prize. That is how the cha- channel is growing. There's an awesome prize. I mean, like we said, you a can win A photo shoot yeah. from us as and a well beautiful as. nomination bracelet with three links on from Gabriel's Jewelry and Nomination South Africa. You don't have anything to lose. You can only benefit. You only need to be a subscriber. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you tomorrow and have an awesome evening. Bye, guys. Cheers.